there's a thief in the shed. Taking his Latin name from the ancient Sanskrit, meaning to steal, this creature has climbed into man's back pocket and has cheerfully been picking it for millennia. We may not notice, but another member of the family certainly does. The real life Tom and Jerry show is going on under our very noses. Even down to the mouse getting the better of the cat. They can and will live almost anywhere, even where man is too sensible to go. From the cold of mountain tops to the scorching heat of the desert, you will find mice. In these islands, they are often at home here, in the woodlands. Mother Nature has done the mouse few favors. It may be cute, but with little in the way of defenses, they do well to survive the trials of mice. High in the leafless canopy, the rooks congregate. Somber dark plumage gives them a sinister appearance. In folklore, birds with black plumage were regarded with suspicion. The mature trees form an unbroken layer across the top of the woodland, the canopy. Beneath them are the understory and shrub layers composed of smaller trees such as hazel, birch and yew. Lower still on the forest floor grows an ever-changing patchwork of colour, where sunlight penetrates to the forest floor. As the temperature rises, insects emerge from a million tiny eggs and are eagerly sought by sharp eyes and probing beaks. There are no shortage of takers for the growing food supply. Spring is the season of birth and growth, and the race is on to find a mate and to stake a claim to territory. From North Africa and Northeast Europe, chaffinches are arriving to join the resident population. But it is the robin's song that is amongst the first to penetrate the cold spring air. The snowdrops are making the most of the spring sunlight to grow before the canopy blocks out much of the light. Beneath the hazel catkins, Oblivious to the activity above are a family of dozy little creatures enjoying the last of their winter sleep. Spotting a dormouse is rare. They spend half the year completely inactive, lost in the deep sleep of hibernation. During this time, their bodies slow to almost nothing, except the occasional snore. The rest of the year is also spent half asleep. The dormouse only ventures out at night, its light body allowing it to reach those twigs that heavier animals can't reach. Where field and woodland meet, the tiny harvest mouse makes its home. With the pygmy gerboa of Pakistan, it is the smallest of 1,700 species known as rodents, a name derived from the Latin to gnaw. Like its cousin the dormouse, the harvest mouse has the acrobatic tools of a gymnast. Its feet are equipped with extra long toes, and it sports a short, flexible gripping tail. This kit allows it to scramble up the thinnest twig and even hang upside down.
under cover of darkness, stirred by the warming spring air, the wood mouse emerges from her nest for the first time. It is the commonest of the four species of wild mouse found throughout these islands. It nibbles on a menu of last year's leftovers. This rich source of calories provides an energy boost, reviving it after the deprivation of winter and fortifying it to face the trials that lie ahead. Nature and size has decreed that the mouse is on the menu of virtually every carnivore in the land. Nature's compensation to the mouse has been to make it gloriously productive. When not eating or preening at this time of year, it is likely to be chasing a mate. The male and female's respective scents prove irresistible and signal, like a beacon, the best time for breeding. A mouse's strategy for survival is simply to breed faster than it can be eaten. Some scientists have calculated that a single pair can produce over two and a half thousand living descendants in only one season. However, the vast majority end up as dinner, taking their place in the food chain. With young on the way, suitable lodgings must be found quickly. An opportunist by nature, mice can set up home almost anywhere. This abandoned vole's nest could be extended. Or this nest box appropriated. Structural alterations complete, this mouse sets about creating the soft furnishings to make her nest cosy and snug for her babies. She goes out to gather the leaves of oak and beech and moss accompanied by her mate. This is the last contribution he will make towards raising the young. The collected leaves and bark are fashioned into a tightly woven nest. As the woodland puts on its leafy green coat, the earth below is blanketed by a shimmering sea of bluebells. Their life cycle must be completed quickly before the trees are in full foliage and a dark curtain is drawn over the woodland floor. The missile thrush's nestlings, camouflaged among the shrubbery, clamour for caterpillars, but only when a parent is within earshot so as not to attract any unwanted attention. Even the bird droppings are carried far from the nest in an attempt to keep its location secret. As the birds fall silent at dusk, the night shift comes on duty.
The largest carnivorous animal of the woods, the badger, comes out to scour the forest floor for food. The badger's diet consists mainly of worms, but it's supplemented by cereals and fruits in the autumn. The badger is designed to dig. Their homes are testament to this. Some sets can consist of up to 800 metres of underground tunnels and chambers. These cavernous homes, often inhabited by successive generations for hundreds of years, need constant maintenance. Fortunately, the badgers are fastidious housekeepers, changing their bedding on a regular basis. There are watchful eyes in the trees. The wary mouse will hardly die of old age. If she's lucky, she'll live long enough to raise her babies. The young mice are about two and a half weeks old. They were born blind, naked and helpless, but are almost ready to be weaned. Their eyes are open and their fur grown. Within a month of birth, they leave the nest to make way for the next generation. But for now, they are safe with their mother to care for them. To help keep up her supply of milk, their mother has a secret larder of stored fruit and seeds. This Aladdin's cave minimizes the number of perilous trips that she needs to make to the realm above. Within as little as 20 days, this female will be ready to breed again. Ready or not, these youngsters will be forced to venture out in search of their own territory. Falling debris from the canopy provides a nutritious diet for the fungi whose ghostly forms lurk in the damp recesses of the forest floor. Just as the rooks scavenge for flesh, so fungi feed from the corpses of trees. They act as nature's recycling plant. These parts, the fruiting bodies, grow from threads present in the earth all year round. When the humidity is just right, they release millions of microscopic spores into the air. As night cloaks this woodland playground, death lurks in unexpected places. While some fungi are fine dining for a mouse, others are lethal. For those that learn fast, the lingering threat of death by misadventure can be avoided, no matter which nooks and crannies are explored and tasted. This slippery glass has proved one quest too many. Getting out of things is always harder than getting in.
but by far the greatest killer of mice are the talons of the owl. Everything about the owl is designed for hunting. Her hearing is so acute that she can hunt almost blind. Her feathers are fashioned for stealthy, silent flight. Her eyes afford superb vision, and her razor-sharp talons and hooked bill bring instant death to anything caught in their embrace. An easy living can be made by stealing grain from the farmer's barn. This opportunistic thief takes advantage of the farmer's provision, scurrying in to plunder any spills. Concealed in the shadows, there is a ghostly watcher waiting. Waiting while the mouse fattens on the seed. The barn owl prefers to hunt outdoors. Her acute hearing not only allows her to detect the mouse, but to accurately pinpoint its exact location. To remove any audible interference and to avoid detection, the owl flies silently. Twin orbs around the eyes collect and focus any signal from its prey. Unlike the owl's feathers, the grass rustles. Each of the barn owl chicks can consume its own body weight every day. That adds up to a lot of hunting. The mouse's fur and bones return to the barn floor as regurgitated pellets. Those that survive the terrors of the night face an inquisitive prowler, the fox, yet another creature seeking to put mouse on its menu, and likewise the weasel. Another species of mouse common throughout England is the yellow-necked, almost indistinguishable from its relative, the wood mouse. This one, unusually, has built her nest in the safety of the hayloft, but the weasel is on the trail. She must feed to maintain her supply of milk. Her youngsters, only a few days old, are reliant on this alone to grow. No matter how quickly she feeds, any time away from her nest may be too long. She leaves behind a brood totally defenceless and vulnerable, even without the capacity to escape. The weasel has caught the scent. snakes through the hay, following its nose. The mouse returns to chaos, her youngsters gone. For most creatures, this would be disaster, but the mouse will have a new litter in 30 days.
the late summer silence is broken by loosening leaves. As autumn drifts in, worn out parts are discarded, spent leaves spiral to the ground, returning to the earth from which they sprang. Essential nutrients will eventually filter back into the roots and stems for recycling. All of the woodland creatures, including the roe deer, are preparing for the winter. Their foxy red summer coat is exchanged for a grey-brown winter coat in September and October. They are shy animals and generally keep to cover. The grey squirrel, a rodent like the wood mouse, gathers nuts and seeds and hides them in caches, which, with a bit of luck, it might find again when the earth is carpeted with snow. The nuts and other seeds not recovered will probably sprout the following year. The mouse is also making provision for harder times ahead. It has a larder to fill, and some of these fruits will be suitable. But the rich windfall of crab apples are not suitable to store. As much as possible will need to be consumed before they rot away. A wood mouse can live in the wild for as long as two years, but few make it beyond a few months. Most, sooner or later, succumb to the trials of mice. <laughs>